Hello and what? Wait, that doesn't sound right. Welcome. I brought a new microphone. In this episode, I'm trying out a breakaway system on my spear gun. Here's Charlie with a nice butterfish. Quick to tick it off. Good job, mate. Summer is just around the corner, and with it, big kingfish. This day, I went out using a breakaway setup on my gun. It's important to test out your gear before you go shooting big fish. Fucking snoop it. Yeah, it's like snapper snooping, but you don't have to be a subtle. The word hate is overused, and I try avoid saying it, but I hate finding rubbish in the ocean. Red moki are very calm, docile fish, making them an easy target for sparrows. I would encourage everyone to avoid shooting them. There is no challenge. Likewise for these fish, the Maori chiefs, just leave them be. However, trevally are excellent eating, excellent hunting. Unfortunately, these ones were a lot smaller than the ones I go after, so I left them. I get down to the bottom at a weed line, dust up, put my head down, and when I look up, I see a couple nice gofish coming in towards me. A nice little pile of them there. Goatfish are one of my all-time favourite fish to hunt and to eat. Hunt them effectively requires getting right down to the bottom and letting them come to you. If you execute this technique right, they'll make it very easy. Eventually, I pick out the fish I want, extend on him, lay myself flat against the bottom. I'm ready, ready to take a shot, but do not take it until that perfect moment when I know I'm going to hit it exactly where I want it. Right here, stone shot, perfect. Exactly where I wanted to hit the fish, I waited. Patience is a virtue. Exercise it and you will get what you want. It will fall right into your lap. What was it? Go first. You get it? Good thing you got the break away. Yeah, stone got hold of it. <laughs> As well as being one of the tastiest, goat fish are also one of the prettiest. Absolutely amazing colours on them. Have a look at that. Spectacular. Full spectrum from red to blue and everything in between. Bleeding, gutting and gilling is essential to ensure top eating quality. You can't do that. What would Aaron say? What what? Aaron say. Aaron? Aaron the fucking cunt on YouTube. <laughs> Spearfishing is not just about killing fish. Every time I go out, I see hundreds, if not thousands of fish every time. But always, I only take a select few. Crayfish are an absolute delicacy, and I've been enjoying them more and more since refining my techniques and preparing them. Here we have quite a nice one singing a crack making it really easy for me to get my hand in there, get a nice clean grab. It is important to damage the crayfish as little as possible when you're removing it from its crack, in case you're going to release it. This one is a female when I turn it over. I decide to let it go. I try only keep male crayfish. I love and respect octopus. They are supremely intelligent and intuitive creatures. However, they are also one of my favourite things to eat in the ocean. Out of everything, they are one of the tastiest. Very unique flavour and texture, unparalleled. While I was pursuing this octopus, it did something extraordinary. It made itself look like it was going to go one way before switching up and going in the opposite direction. Cunning creature. However, it was not enough to escape me. The most effective and humane way to dispatch an octopus is biting it between the eyes, crushing its brain. What you're seeing here is its tentacles over my GoPro, as it's fighting for its life. I ended up ripping my snorkel off my mask here, but I dispatched it humanely, effectively, and its pain is over. Octopi are extremely beautiful and perceptive. Killing an octopus should never be taken lightly. To properly prepare an octopus for consumption takes a long time, many steps, but is well worth it. This particular octopus was absolutely delicious. It is always a pleasure to bump into fellow aquatic mammals. This time was a young fur seal. Very beautiful, very playful, very happy, very, very nice to see. To be in the presence of these animals is always inspiring. I heard a shot and went over to Charlie to see what was going on. He had shot a kawai. It was a bad shot. So as a good dive buddy, I went down and helped him secure this fish. If your buddy's having trouble, help him out. That's why you're there. 
once again leading the car way, ensuring top eating quality. Good shot placement. With great power comes great responsibility. As you get better at spearfishing, it becomes more and more important to know how to limit yourself and understand that you only take what you need, not what you can. You're not going out there to kill every fish that you see. You're going out there to get a couple, a couple of fish that you can be really proud of. You're not there to fill bins, meet quotas, get likes on Instagram. You're there to enjoy yourself primarily, and getting a feed is a bonus. When you go diving, you are leaving the sanctity of your world and entering the home of many, many other creatures. You need to respect that. When you go diving, you are a guest and you should behave accordingly. Treat all the creatures that call this place home with respect and honor, and you will be treated the same way. Karma is a force that unifies all energy. The energy that you put out will be returned in due time. If you put out good energy, you'll get good energy back. Likewise with bad energy. Put good energy into the world. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. This episode's sustainability message is be kind to the creatures that call the ocean home. Catch you on the next one.